that. Here's Art the Clown. You know? So it really started with me. It was going to be my calling card in the industry. So, um, and I did the special effects. So I just wanted to pack it out with like as many creatures and effects as I could and uh, just make this really kick ass horror short that stood out. And um, I always liked clowns. I thought there was something cool. And I thought, like, at that point in time when I made it, it was like 2005, I think. So you only really had Pennywise, and you didn't have a serial killer clown, like a clown with a knife in his hand. You know? So I said, I, I want to try something. And I kind of took inspiration from every slasher that I grew up watching. Like, for, you know, there's a little bit of everything in art of clown. Like, there's like, his humor, Freddy Krueger, and all of us. Right, the silent killer, like Michael Myers and Jason, um, the grit of like Leatherface. You know, there's a, there's a little bit of everything that I love, so I just hope I could, you know, put it in a pot, shake it up, and some original results come out. out. Yeah, yeah. So it really started there, and then it was just, you know, the idea um, started with uh, this clown just terrorizing a woman on a city bus, and that's like kind of the opening scene of uh, All Hallows Eve, where he you know, eventually tries to stick her with a needle. Um, and then, I, you know, so I made that short, short to people, and everybody liked it, but they loved art. And he's only in it for a little bit. And they're like, yeah, it's cool, but that clown, you really got something there. I think you should keep keep going with that. So, you know, you hear these things enough, you know, you should listen to people and listen to the consensus and stuff. So, so that was, you know, I just kept going there. And then I made a subsequent short, which was just to terrify the short, which was, which was just about art the clown. And then from there, he started getting even more popular, and then it was just naturally try and make a feature. But it was a lot, it was hard to get to terrible this terrifier because all Hallows Eve happened first. Yep. yep. Yeah, so it's been a long, long time. Yeah. 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 So when when you guys read the script, what did you think? Like were you guys like, oh, I want to get this right away? Like what what did you guys think? I was like, this Damien guy has some issues. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanna work with him. <laughs> yeah, I um I think uh I inevitably went to um, the, this death scene of Don and was like, um, this is going to be interesting. I don't know how how he's going to pull this off. I kind of came from a little bit of an effects background myself, so I was like, I don't know how he's going to pull this off, but I'm really still a sore heart. Yeah, or <laughs> heart, you know, or two, or, you know, whatever I'm really sorry to see how he does it. Yeah, yeah, so um, I'm really sorry to see how he did it, and, and I mean, I, I think he did a really yeah. great fucking job. And I said that. Sorry. I think that was <laughs> like a highlight the movie where it just gets worse. Better, yeah, that. Better, you know, how we look at it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was talking to them about that uh, earlier this week. I, um, they were like, you know, what's so crazy about that film is we were all looking, waiting for, oh, yeah, this is going to be the final girl. This is going to be the final death. Like, naturally, they thought it was Jenna's character. And Damien kind of really turns that trope on its head in a really awesome way. You know, and I think that's really one of the things that's really registered with horror fans, I think, about the film. It's just like, it doesn't feed into those tropes, but still giving you everything that you want in a film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, I, I get to wear boobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was really stoked because I'm like, I had seen all how I see, so I was already familiar with the character, and I just loved it immediately because I'm like, I, I, I grew up watching like, old silent films and stuff like that. I was also like when I was a teenager, my aunt got me a box set of Mr. Bean videos. <laughs> yeah. And I was obsessed with Mr. Bean for the longest time. So I, I love that character. And all I, I always wanted to play a silent character like that that's mischievous. And I was like, oh my god, art is like an evil Mr. Bean. I can't <laughs> wait. I was like, just reading that script. I was like, ooh. I, and I saw so many possibilities to do some really fun, creative things with the character. I was like, oh, this is so much fun. Yeah. And, and you have a history in your mind, right? Not really, no, no. I I, I wouldn't say miming per se. I did a lot of physical comedy growing up. I, I did a lot of children's theater. Children are more into the visual and the verbal, like humor especially. And so I, I was big at that with my background with like the great physical comedians of old, like Chaplin, Marx, all those guys. It's like, I, I, I put a lot of that into a lot of the Stadium for children, so that, that, I guess that's more of my background. But I did have like, um, which I was actually here six years ago, actually, I stayed in the same hotel. But I was here with How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the musical. And our Grinch <laughs> was, um, I was an understudy, and his name was Stephen Carl, and he was Robbie Rotten on the show Lazy Town. Yes, and 
Stefan was a master at physical comedy. I have never met anybody like that in my life. That he, he had, he was like where I wanted to be with physical comedy when it because he actually trained me in clown. You know, he, he was from Iceland and went to all these schools, I guess, for that. So he just really took me under his wing all those years, like you know, doing his understudy, and I really got to learn so much from him, and I put a lot of that into him. He unfortunately passed away from cancer last oh. year. He was my buddy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was amazing. He was amazing. And if you watch Lazy Town and watch some of the stuff, you'll probably see a lot more. Right. Really nice oh, he was amazing. He had the biggest heart. He, 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 he also had kids, so he was a big, he, was, he loved children. He was always so good with everybody. And it's like, we all loved working with Stefan. He was like everybody's dad. So was, uh, I'm sorry, I lost you. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. he's carrying. Um, I guess you could say he's still carrying on the art. So, <laughs> there you go. Yes. so the uh, the sequel. Is there anything you guys can tell us about it? <laughs> We're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Going down and going home as the sun was coming up. 
Um, Phil would be literally slapping himself to stay awake as we drove. Um, and there was, I was like at the end of the two weeks and you, you're, it does something to your brain when you're on that schedule and it's probably not healthy, but, but it feeds into what we were doing. Um, and we were all so exhausted and so kind of crazy. Uh, we stopped at a gas station at one point and Phil was getting gas and I don't know how this came up. But, so you've seen this man's movies, and you've seen the sort of depraved shit that comes out of his head. He apparently really loves hedgehogs, <laughs> and went on, he ended, up, he ended up going on like a rant about hedgehogs and how amazing they are and how cute they are <laughs> at like 8 in the morning, and it was just the most endearing thing, so I just wanted to share that with all of you. Aww. <laughs> and you should shout out, you should shout out Phil, because uh, he and his wife were really kind of, no, they're not... Phil's not only the producer of the film, but he was really kind of like everything else. Everything. My stunt double. <laughs> yeah, and, and, like, and, and literally like really did so much for us and really looked out for us. His wife cooked a lot of our meals. Like they, and he put in so much effort for us. He, he became like the father figure on set that we all desperately needed. So yeah. like we should really yeah. shout out to him. And he's right. Yeah. That's my stunt double too. The, the door that was still doing that, which is so funny because we're so polar opposite look wise. And they slapped some like makeup on. I'm like, there you go, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> go. He only had to do one take, one take wonder over there. Phil would be like ready to like, he'd be like vouching for me and be there like with some of the crazy like FX stuff. He was constantly like making sure I was warm, making sure that like everything was okay. So, you know, I remember there are times when like, I, I was I wasn't sure if I could do another take, and he would kind of like be my advocate, but also you know encourage me to do what I could. And he was he was absolutely amazing. He almost took me to like the hospital on day one, I think. Right? <laughs> I was like, the... oh, why, yeah, why don't you just take him through that whole experience? <laughs> <laughs> um, my first day uh, for Terrifier wasn't um, it was a pre production day. We were doing the, the body casts for um, for the or what would be that death scene, and I've, I've done life cast before, I was like, oh yeah, like, no worries, we can do this, and I, I forget, like, what we did that, we couldn't get, like, it, this is all really technical, like, we couldn't get, like, the alginate on time, so we decided to just go right to, like, the silicone, which, like, should have been okay, but it wasn't for some reason, and I was just stuck to the table covered <gasps> in blue goo that we could not get off. Um... I was just, I was, I was just stuck there, and like it was really kind of painful to get off too. And like I remember, like the the makeup artist there was like, "Okay, we're gonna coach you through this." It, it, it must have sounded like I was in labor. Like she was like, "Okay, just breathe." Okay, you know, and well, I like yell, you know, and and I remember I didn't know this was happening at the time, but apparently, like Phil took you into the room, was like, "We gotta get this oh, yeah. girl to the hospital. <laughs> we can't keep doing this." And like we got it off, and everything was fine, but like. Yeah, I took a shower and it felt better and they drove me home and like, you know, all is well. <laughs> I got like a really nice like wax, I guess. <laughs> like, now you're gonna need a new like, yeah. <laughs> You know, person's job. I don't know. But yeah, that was like that was day one. So like uh, you know yeah. I can't believe you came back. <laughs> yeah, like you <laughs> you know, I, I'm a, dude, I, I'm a ride or die person, okay? I I'm in it to win it. But yeah. That was that was day that was day one. Phil, ready ready to take me to the hospital. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll add my own story too. It's one of my favorite stories I've got to say. It was uh one night when we were filming in Trent, New Jersey, and Trent's a very dangerous area, I guess you could say. At least the area we were filming in. It was about two o'clock in the morning. They're, I think they're doing Jenny's oh, yes. death on set. So I'm bored, I'm in full costume and makeup, I got blood all over me, and I hear these two women outside the window having a very Jerry Springerish argument. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm bored. <laughs> so I go over, so I got to see them, and it's like, and I forgot how I looked. <laughs> oh no! And so like, one of them looks up and sees me, and I'm like, hi. <laughs> 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 I go in off, and I'm like, well, that was funny. And about 10 minutes later, like Phil and Damien and George, kind of hard on DP, they come into the room and they're like kind of giggling. I'm like, oh, what's going on, guys? Like, 
Hey Dave, uh, so we got someone here that wants to meet you. And I was, I was excited because at the time, uh, Phil was doing a movie with Tom Sizemore around that time. So I thought Tom Sizemore might have come to me a surprise visit the set. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? It's Tom Sizemore. You never know. But uh, I'm like, cool. Well, who was here though? No, we're not going to tell you. It's going to be a surprise. Like, okay, cool. And there, there was like this, there was a garage door thing, a roll up thing. And they're like, just wait over there and we'll tell you when to come out. I'm like, okay, guys. Wait, Dave, like, come out. And I roll up the garage door, coming up, and I just stop because about 10 to 15 of New Jersey's finest <gasps> in like full on riot gear, like they're ready to go to war. <laughs> and my butt puckers. <laughs> and I was like, I just squeak out this. Oh my God! <laughs> and there's silence for a few seconds. I'm like, oh God, I'm about to die. And they just all just start cracking up. They're like, ah! I'm like, yeah, you better be glad you didn't come out of here for us because we would have shot you on sight. Oh. Like, I believe you. And see, we had our, we didn't have running water in that building, so we had a portage on out there. And I'm like, I am so glad <laughs> that when they showed up, I was not out there in that job. Because I was covered in all that blood and everything. And like, oh my god. But it was so much fun because they're all like getting pictures made with me, but there's like this one cop was definitely afraid of clowns. He would not come anywhere near me. And <laughs> said, yeah, come on, Johnny. He's like, nah, nah, man. Oh, my God, I can't go over there. I'm like, oh, come on. You got the grenade launcher. I think you're okay. <laughs> like, nah, nah. And then, like another one was like, even like, I, I still don't know if he was joking or not, but it's like, hey, yeah, uh, because we told him we're going to be using a gun later on. And it's like, did you get to hear any shots or anything like that? That's why he's like, oh, yeah, well, you guys need a body? We got one down the station right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. It was so. It was so. But that was like an awesome night. It was just like we made those guys like night. I think. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, not a boy night. I mean, she she had to die that night. But you're here. <laughs> <laughs> not in real life. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> like a cat. Um, maybe like uh, two, three months. But we also kept going back and getting pickups and reshoots. Um, we even had a, a cut that we showed at the Tell Your Ride Horror Show. And then that was the first time we ever played with an audience and we got to see reactions and get feedback. And there were a couple of things that we were able to go back and tweak, make it a little, a little better. So all in all, it probably took like four or five months like the whole editing process. I got to wrap four different. <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, you didn't give everybody a cake. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was the best. That was the best. <laughs> and I, had, I had a cake, <laughs> and then I had a smaller cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a donut. Here's an ice cube to get by. <laughs> we all did ADR after that in Phil's basement. Sure. Yeah. Especially me. Which I'm very proud of. What, what, the 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 bunny? what was the bunny's name? Oh, the bunny in the basement. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that, but the entire pizzeria scene is, uh, is, is ADR. So because the, the refrigerator was so loud that we couldn't use the audio to record, record it. So we had a Foley and every little sound effect, someone just like rubs against it. Yeah, every little thing is, is done in post. Yeah, yeah, so I'm proud of that. Really well. So did, did, I have a question. Uh, so did our meet these two by chance? Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is yeah, that you're right. 
No, I, but, uh, maybe it is. I don't Google. know. Less sexy. I basically you're like watching the what you're trying to mimic on a screen, and you're trying to say the words at the same time as that person is saying it. It's your hard. self person. It's yeah. It's hard. It's not. I mean, it. it Luckily, we were just doing it for dialogue and not, say, sneezes or sex noises, which are a lot harder to imitate, but oh. have to also be done that way sometimes. <laughs> and there's nothing sexier than being alone in a room making sex noises, surrounded by people with and I, I'll tell you, the secret of the video game work, you're basically doing all the pipe sounds and just, like, making sex noises, too. See you, Sheena. Can you imagine what it was like in set with us? We had so much fun. Like yeah. we really like that was something also like Damien and Phil and everybody did really, really well. It's like this cast, we had a blast and we're mm -hmm. still friends. Like, yeah. It's awesome. Like and uh, seriously, like super talented, super smart, really informed actors, like amazing, seriously. I'm not down for sure. Nothing like the finished product. Like it's just all laughs in between takes. Mm -hmm. Like my favorite part of shooting was watching Dave just ride that tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot you were filming, and I was like four o'clock in the morning watching him try and do it. Uh, I, really I, I, into the steps. That was so much fun. I, uh, we were all very loopy that night. I, I, at that one point, night. I just yeah, I mean, every night. But I, I think at one point, I just started singing "Bicycle Race." It's a pervert, the pervert. Family guy, so I remember we were like listening to Irish music driving in circles and you're like like in an Irish oh, accent take off my that. face. Because like, I was so tired. Yeah. I was so tired and we were trying because we we had a, we couldn't go into the hotel for a while because they had to make up our rooms or something like that. And like we're all so tired and yeah, I still I don't have know all why we're listening on. to Irish music. Like yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah, I totally forgot about <laughs> that. Yeah. Or, or like, you know, contained because you're in a musical, but you know, like, you know. Yeah, we're like similar. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We had questions. <laughs> Your facial expressions, uh, where did you base them on? Uh, like, where did they come from? <laughs> I, I would guess just years of just doing children's theater and everything. That's like the thing I always did as a kid growing up was making faces. Because like people in my family would make faces all the time too. Like my aunt had always this suspicion of growing up. <laughs> and pictures and I always had fun doing that. My mom was like, you know, your face is going to get stuck one day here and that. <laughs> cool. And that's what I did. I'm like I, every every role I've ever taken, where I wear like kind of some kind of interesting makeup, I like to sit in front of the mirror for a while and just make faces and see what all I can come up with. And I did that a lot with art, so I had fun doing it. Because I, I, that's one thing I wanted to add it to more to the character was that nature to him because he is a clown, and since he can't talk, you got to find other ways to you know pose. And so I was like, well, it's all going to be in the face. And it's luckily with that the makeup that. We use it. It's like a, it's like a second skin, and so I have to really do that. Yeah. I, I probably look crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Your performance was fantastic. How long does that makeup take to put on? Too long. <laughs> yeah. We got it down to uh, like two. Wow. Yeah, it used to take like three or more. And it would sometimes take more because he not only was he directing, he was doing my makeup for me. So he would have to like leave me to go do some shots and stuff like that, come back and do a little bit more and go film some more. And so I uh, I knew there were some nights I was I would get in the chair around four o'clock, I had to get out of the chair until about midnight. Wow. Uh, just like, so I don't I play a lot of Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wouldn't watch the series for Oh, <laughs> so this is a question for the director. You 
said we had to fly so we never really had to see the whole cloud at night. We kind of did John Wayne Gacy. Is that maybe in part or the part? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm just talking about in film. Yeah. Just a lot of fictional character. I don't like mother face is based off of uh, Edward Gunn. So. Sure, sure. But yeah, uh, so like I said, there's definitely some uh, Leatherface influence in yep. art. So, <laughs> it all kind of funnels through, you know? Love to see the chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's funny. When um, we had a producer on the first one, uh, gave us a little bit of money, and uh, we needed some more, and he came back in because we wanted to add actually the kill of this fellow over here, Mike Levy, the exterminator. That's a set shot, though. <laughs> that was added later, like I said, we played the movie at the Tiger Ride. That scene wasn't even in. Oh, right. Yeah. So we went back and shot that. We figured we could use a little more brutality. So <laughs> I said, let's do a really, really graphic decapitation. It just goes on and on. You see the whole thing. Um, but the guy who gave us the money to shoot that actual scene was like, oh, can we give Art a chainsaw and do it? And there was just something where it was like so sacrilegious. You know, you know, like against Leatherface to give him a chainsaw, and I just well, I wouldn't do it. That's all I just can't. I was like, but I promise it'll be pretty cool. You know? So we just hacked up and see it. And it's a fun Easter egg too because I don't know a lot of people who know who Mike has as an alter ego as well. He's kind of responsible for a lot of this scary killer clown stuff. Do you all remember the Staten Island clown? Yes. That's the Staten Island. Right there. <laughs> so it's fun, I guess. Now you're I know! <laughs> yeah, I got to the jacket there with the stuff. There can only be one. Yeah. <laughs> Islander, baby. Josh, yeah. there can only be one. If there can only be one, should Bill Starstar be boring? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't need CG. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hello. Shots fired. Shots fired, bitches. Bang, bang. <laughs> oh, that was. I don't I ended up needing a job. It's really funny how it, it was very serendipitous in a lot of ways. Because I, I had taken, I had just gotten off my last, my middle tour of Grinch, and I decided to just take a few months off and on. Audition, just solely audition, and I, I'm a musical theater guy, and so I, I had been up for like four or five national tours where they were. I was in like final callbacks, and it all fell through, and I was getting so disheartened. I was like, oh my God! And then I saw the audition for Terrifier, and they, I'd never done the film before. I always wanted to, and I, I had I was already familiar with the character, so I saw that. And I was like, oh, they need a tall, skinny guy with like physical comic experience or you know, uh, clowning experience to play. Uh, the role of a lifetime. And I'm like, yes, that sounds like me. And I went in and um, it was probably one of the most interesting auditions I've ever had because I did not have a script to go in there. And I walk in here and I see everybody right else with a script. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> You're welcome. Off the question, what are you going to be in the Halloween? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> nice. I, I sometimes do joke with it because that's a fun thing for me. Okay. Hey. Now there's a few now. Yeah. Oh, I, I do like the traditional Joker. I do the comic book version of Joker. The real Joker. Oh, okay. Yes. I do, but I do more of a. The, uh, more of the dark animal kind of Caesar Romero version. Yeah. Yeah. So I play the Joker also in a. Made series on YouTube called Nightmare Escalation. So I kind of I, I based my Joker a lot on Hamill and Romero's versions. He's, he's my favorite film. Yeah, guys, great movie, honestly. Oh, yeah, it's great. Are you talking about Joker or us? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great movie. Thank you. No, seriously, that's all. Thank you. That's the fire. Let's roll those yet. Okay. So my question is, you know, horror is just an amazing genre, and we see so many incredible films that come through conventions and whatnot, but your movie has just taken over. Mm -hmm. yes. Everyone loves you, everyone loves you, but it's, it's the best. Would you prepare for this greatness and for all that's coming? <laughs> no. 
No. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. In all seriousness, like I really believe that I had some. I've been working on it for so long. I put so much of my life into getting to this point. Like I really did. Sacrificed a lot of things. And um, I really believe that there was something there. And I just tried so hard to get it done and get it out. And uh, you know, huge, huge horror fan. Like I really love horror like more than anything. I was named after the old man. I've been watching horror movies since I'm three years old. Right. And uh, yeah, I feel like I know, you know when you got something. I know, right? Yes. Yeah. I have a question. Who do you think will win in a fight? Angela or Art? Oh. 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 Sophie's choice are going to be me. Oh, definitely. Definitely to listen to the show. <laughs> funny how you, you mentioned before you said it's kind of like a roller coaster and that was really my intention going into this movie like I always say I wanted it to feel like the last 15 minutes of like every slasher film but just drawn out into a feature as much as I could you know and, and the main terrifier like I was really I was driving around one day and I just it just popped in my head and I was just like that sounds like a roller coaster right you just want like a terrifier and I'm like that's what so it's really like people say like oh, is like is like the terror part, which he is, but it's really like just the title of the the, the movie as an experience. So, yeah. Hi. After watching um, Terrifier, I went out to what Paul Halsey wanted to see, and I felt we weren't a lot in part two. So. Oh well, we uh, I wasn't in part two at all. Yeah, yeah he's not. So, you know, he's he's right. Why we? Yeah, so um, part two really had nothing because I um, retained the rights to the character, so they just wanted to keep using the title because the first one was like a little successful, um, but they couldn't use him, so so that's why. Because I never, again, I never wanted to make All Hallows Eve like that producer. Had... <coughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, I did the best I could. Like... Where is he? Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's safe to say it's going to be Terrifier 2021, I hope. I hope. Well, ter so Terrifier 2, uh, I hope it comes out uh, next October. As far as like how many sequels that there will be, I'm really hoping for just like a solid trilogy. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I really, I really, and we already have it uh, pretty much figured. Um, so we'll see. I mean, if I'm like on the streets and I need money, we'll bring money. <laughs> 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 he needs to pay for his yacht. We're gonna make another one. We'll send it to space. Art versus zombies. Yes. Art on ice. <laughs> 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 Art yeah. versus art. It's just doing artwork like 
<laughs> He's having an existential crisis. <laughs> it's like Bob Ross, but it's blood. Yeah. No happy trees. No happy yeah, trees. It's all friendly faces. <laughs> well, it's a dud trees and black and white. <laughs> Um, you're talking about what Halloween stole from us? Yeah. Oh. We 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 stole a ton of shit from Halloween as well. So exactly. that's a different. I mean, it takes from everything. It's really hard to do. But uh, as far as the jack o' lantern, right? I had that idea for a while because in Terrifier, the short film, when she uh. You guys remember it's the, the last segment in All Hallows Eve when she finds the mutilated girl in the parked car. Like I had, I had kind of done that there. Um, like you just see like the, the eyes are cut out and the nose is cut off, but she's still alive. So I just took it a little further and put the candles at that point. Oh. So yeah, it was just a cool thing for him to do because you know we incorporate his artistic touch with his name, so he always does like you know kind of create yeah, like shit with the bodies and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought that would be the cool. shirt art. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone asked me recently, like, why would you do that? Why would you go in? That was today. Yeah. I, was <laughs> like, I, I thought this out actually. It's like, why do you do that? So you like, you know, it cause distraction. So like, while the employees are there cleaning all that up, Art had the time to go kill the owner of the place and do the jack o' lantern thing. Next <laughs> time. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was like, what's the worst yeah, thing you could do with that? Thank you. I'm here all like folks. Good meal. Uh, Wait, there's the rest of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the shots. I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, Burn Lord is full tonight. <laughs> yeah. Bring the aloe. Uh, I'm curious as a as the writer, why is Tara the only female who got bullets, she still suffered a lot, but not, she had bullets in her face and her body for a while before you get older, mm -hmm. but why, why changing the weaponry just isn't for her? Why go to a gun? Which is, that that's probably the most polarizing part of the movie, right? I mean, some people absolutely hate the gun, some people think it's creative, they hadn't seen it before. And that was like, that was a personal challenge to myself. Again, just taking all the classic slasher tropes and all the elements, but like trying to inject something new into it. And for me, I'm just like, I wonder if you can give Freddy a gun or Jason and like they can use it and would it be effective? Would it be scary? So that was, that was my personal challenge. And I don't know if I succeeded, but um, you know, I like the unpredictability with art, you know, and all of a sudden he just pulls out a fucking gun. Yeah. Yes. And the reason yes. is there's a few things like so like he keeps the gun as it's like his backup, his contingency, because like she's got him at that point. Like if she she keeps going, she she's gonna fucking, you know, bash his skull in and kill him, you know. So she, he knows it's like I I gotta resort to the to the piece and, and, and take her out. But when he does it, like he does it in such a sadistic serial killer way, like he doesn't just kill her with it, he just keeps making her suffer and just more and more and more. And even when he finally kills her, he just destroys her face. So, you know, he's gonna use it, use the gun like a slasher in a really horrible way. And but, also, I'm sorry. No, go for we, we discovered a lot of humor with Art the Clown in this one as opposed to in All Hallows Eve with a lot of things Dave brought to it. And sort of because the kills are so brutal and they go on for so long, it's like I liked giving a little bit of levity after every kill, so like we would find something quirky and funny for Art to do to kind of just link to the audience or something after the kills. And that was the only one where I did not want to do anything funny because we're taking out the main character and you're just not supposed to be laughing at that. It's really, it's just that moment you always have to come back no matter how funny Art is and you just have to realize that he, at the end of the day, is just completely sadistic and evil. And although he's fun, you're really not supposed to be laughing at him. So. I also look at it, it's like, you know, horror films have always been had a way like turning a mirror on society. And that's a thing that we're dealing with in our society right now. It's a lot of gun violence. That's, that's a big way of kind of turning that mirror on everybody. Because right? that's a very more it's effective. A real, it's a real fear that people have now. Of course, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, and that was something that I really, to, to go back to the first question, that was something that I really liked about the script. Because in my mind, when I read it, I was, first of all, I was like, finally, like, we get 
fucking chick in a movie that fights back and just, just you know, <laughs> right? That actually kicks ass, and I, that was something that really appealed to me. And and um, I like that he has to use a gun to take her down. That that she was going to win if he didn't, you know, for better for worse, cheat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that makes it that makes it more um, more shocking. And then yeah, and then it also uh, it, it's it's even more shocking because then you're thinking, well, he had that this whole time. <laughs> and so he really only it's not that he wants to kill them necessarily it's, it's something much darker yeah, I, I looked at like Art wanted to mentally break her that's <laughs> why he did to her in front of her right. and he's yeah. like he wants to mentally break her it's like it. yeah and it's like and he realizes in that moment it's like wow I, I can't beat her physically I can't beat her mentally I'm done yeah. I'm done she's no longer fun I'm bored with this. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Like moving on to the next one. Right. So he's really he's really about just the, the foreplay and the, the suffering aspect of it as opposed to just you know, your other slashers are just boom, just one shot it's until it's over. Right. You know, with him he just wants to go long and drag it out as long. That's how he gets it in the Yeah, hundred percent. Can I piggyback on that question that just came yeah, of course not. Also the fact that it's probably not Mm-hmm. There's that moment with the ring and, and whatnot. The fact that the gun comes into that after the fact almost makes it more like usually like a mad lover is using a gun rather than some other mm-hmm. device. So that just kind of made me think about was there really mm-hmm. a, he had any holes like that, and that's why the gun was really because of the No, but I mean, when he sees her. Uh, in the street, when he sees the both of them, he really just fixates on Tara and knows, like, oh, that's my, you know, that's my piece of meat for the night. Like, I have to have her. And he just really, I mean, even the whole thing with the ring is just like this whole uh, yes. acceptance, this this mutual thing that's just got yeah, yeah, your this mind. partnership <laughs> that's going to be formed for the rest of that night. Um, so, but yeah, nothing really specifically with the gun to tie into that. <laughs> Wrote the script that you want to do a trilogy? Was it depending on the success of the original one? Or? Yeah, I always um, I always knew I wanted to make more, um, not necessarily a trilogy, but um, like someone just asked me today on the floor about uh, resurrecting him at the end, and they were oh, so nice about that. Yeah, yeah, and they were disappointed with that scene because they just wanted the supernatural. The supernatural. Sure. Um, which I get, um, but I never intended for him, even. Because originally we weren't going to shoot that scene. It was just he shoots himself and it ends with Victoria's reveal and the movie's over. So I just did, I knew personally I was going to be bringing him back someday. But I didn't want the audience left hanging and just like, oh, really? If they, if they liked it, to just be disappointed, like, you know, I'm never going to see any more of that. And that guy just kind of just peter out or whatever. So <laughs> I wanted to leave that in there so they knew he was going to be back and knew there was going to be a sequel just to keep the, the fire burning on it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but now that we did that, okay, um, we're really embracing the supernatural elements in the second one. It's a huge factor, yeah, big time. So it's not just like a little cop out. He's just supernatural. Like we're really going into it. It's like a character, you know, it's all background. Yeah, yeah. You, well, I can't. <laughs> yeah. 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 This one is very short. Like we don't lose anything. Yeah. Everything is. Amped up big time in part two. Part two is like, I wrote like fucking Apocalypse Now horror movie. It's absurd. It's so ambitious. It's really big. Maybe to a fault, but uh, we're going to try and pull it off. Um, but you're going to you're gonna learn some things. You're definitely going to get a little background on him. Uh, yeah, it's going to be. I'm excited. Definitely excited for it. I believe you all look. Yeah, so kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of with thing like was art surviving him. Surviving shooting himself in the mouth. Okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm oblivious of this few things. Honestly, because I just can totally not make sense to them. Like what he was like before that. Mm-hmm. I actually didn't realize he wasn't until right. until he came back. Did he like, realize was that, that was that supposed to be a big reveal? Like that he <laughs> was a demon? Like that he wasn't it was supposed to be great. It was supposed to be the most perfect thing ever. ever, ever. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That was the most awkward fucking night. Oh, boy. <laughs>
<laughs> we all learned about ourselves that day. <laughs> oh, those poor crew guys. Those poor crew guys. What was that? That was that was my first night working with Samantha on set. So that was or Samantha. <laughs> oh, yeah. I knew I was gonna love her too because I I, I show up and I'm like, hi, Samantha. I'm David. And I'm David my boobies. <laughs> and she's like, that's awesome. I'm like, okay, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> we're gonna have fun. But yeah, that was that was actually not written that way. I was uh, originally the script. Damien wrote it where I was wearing all that over my clown outfit. It was like two days before we filmed, and he's like, I have a crazy idea. And I'm like, Of course you do. <laughs> he's like, What? He's like, Why don't you? I think it'd be freakier if you did it naked. And I'm like, Yeah, that would be freaky. <laughs> I don't know who wants to see my scrawny butt up there, but yeah. yeah. But I, I really thought about it, and there were two things I thought about it. One was like, Yeah, that would be really freaky. It's like that this guy would take off his own clothes and put right. someone's body parts on him like uh. that just to mess with someone. Just you know, just to really get into someone else's head and be like ah, I don't know. And your second reason my, my second favorite. reason <laughs> was because yeah. Catherine. It's like what she was having to do with herself in that her, you know, her kill scene, like really exposing herself in such a manner, in a very vulnerable way, in a very dangerous way too, the way we filmed that scene. And um, I, I consider her to be the MVP of this film. Because what she had to go through for that scene. You know, it, it, we had no team in that room. It was about 20 degrees that night. And she would be in that, in that room, in the whole yeah, location. I mean, there was yeah. no heat anywhere. And she, she had to do that for hours. So we'd only let her hang upside down for like 30 seconds at a time. And we'd sweat her back up. And she had to deal with all that the blood going up into her nose and her eyes. And and she was such a trooper with all that. She had no complaints, she was a total professional. And I was like, you know, if she can go through this, and I, we had not filmed that yet, but I knew what she was going to have to go through for that. And I was like, if she is going to go through that, I can do this too. So that's, I was like, yeah, okay, sure. I'm all in. So yeah. And everybody, that's why our film, everybody's tossing around to just that scene. It's like, Oh. Wasn't it? Didn't it? I, I don't know if this is true or not, but we've been told that's the first time in horror movie history that's been done. I don't know. Exactly like that. I, I've never, I've never seen that before. Yeah. yeah. This is the room of people who would know. <laughs> 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 anyone? Anyone? I, I, I deem it so. <laughs> so you want to go into more detail about like mindset? Let's see. Um. Yeah. I, I mean, we did it. We did it in January. It was a little after. It was a different location. It was in a yeah. It was in a a hot at a bit. It was in a rundown hospital yeah. on uh, Staten Island. And the user were never in. This, that was months apart. So Jen is angle. She's looking at nothing in Jersey, and you're getting cut in half in Staten yeah. Island like three months later. Yeah, so, that was another. I mean, that's thing. like the whole movie was like that. Yeah, that was another thing. Was bending time. Yeah. <laughs> they had to like schedule so we were both on other projects so like that was like getting it really creative and a lot of that stuff oh yeah that's right i forgot because i literally wrapped this and then 24 hours later was on set for bye bye man yeah like that was yeah I totally it was, yeah that was yeah that was like so yeah i don't know why we did it in, in january for no reason for that but we did yeah and um uh it was cold and i i knew it was gonna be, i knew it was gonna be cold i knew it was gonna be long i i i don't I think when I got there, uh, we they had the there's no rig like I'm actually hanging like that, so I think we had the um, the straps like on like on something some kind of pole or something. That, it's basically like a giant uh, swing set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like hanging. So the, the ropes are there, and um, and um, I looked at it and I was like, oh, and I remember like you know definitely being. A Take it back and you're like, oh, don't worry though. Look, and they they put George, the GP, in it. That was like the like to, no, it did that make was me go, that was yeah. the test. That was the test. Yeah, who weighs much more than I do, and it, it, it helped <laughs> hold him. And he was like, you know what? Actually, like, it feels like good on my back, <laughs> like to, to be like this. <laughs> and, then, and so we did it, and we, we, were, we were trying to be as, as safe about it as possible. So it was like, okay. We're not going to be upside down long enough to risk seizure, but we're going to have to get, you know, kind of close because we got to get what we can. And so we would do it in increments and I would 
uh, staying with my legs in the um, in the shackles, and I kind of like they lower me down, and then um, did the take, and like someone's keeping time, time to go, and then I kind of crunch up, and put like a a cart underneath, and I would just wait to go again, and I would reset. So would run over with like blankets and like you know that was just kind of how we did it, and it was long and it was cold. I think we didn't have running water, so. Um, we couldn't really like wash stuff off uh and we just i think it was just all right let's it can't that was like a kind of team thing it's like we have to do this and we have to get this done and we're just gonna do it until we get what we need i'm all I, i'm already here and you know what i mean i'm not i couldn't really go anyway <laughs> so so i think um the but yeah like i mean and, and david was an amazing uh team player and like checking in with me everybody was really great at just like making sure that that i was okay and that everything that I, I was comfortable. The close-ups, I think I, I had hit a point where I couldn't go upside down anymore. So we did that hanging off the table. We did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We did that hanging off the table. So the close-ups with my face, but everything else, everything else is is actually happening. And then, um, except for you know the, the cutting, this thing. <laughs> all right, all right, I healed really well. <laughs> but, um, and, and then my favorite though was that after we'd done that, um, going home in the morning, and since there's no running water, we couldn't really, like we baby oh. wiped off. Um, the two of us, we went back on the Staten Island Ferry back to the city. And um, so they, they brought me a bathroom, I had my own bathroom, I'm like layered in them, because you know, I was just cold, and my winter jacket, and my hair, like cover, like in this, like stuck in this blood, kind of like this, and like just like pink face, like blood all around my ears. And the two of us, like whatever was left from the mask, just like sitting on the ferry, and all these commuters are like coming into work. <laughs> it was like it had like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We're just like sitting there together <laughs> on the way home. So I mean, like the whole the whole thing is just kind of like surreal. And I, I I don't know if I I don't know if I do that particular scene again, but I do <laughs> wear it as like a badge of honor that like we sure. did it and we we, we made it happen. And, you know I mean? so. It's like it's kind of surreal that we're having this conversation. We're talking about that scene right now because when I gave her the part, she was so gung ho, and like we met in near the coffee shop by yeah. you yeah. to talk about this scene, and she wanted to be the coolest, best thing ever if she was going to do it. And we both said like, "Yeah, we pull it off." Like down the line, we'll be talking about it. I forgot oh, about yeah. that, but yeah, like I, yeah, that's so, my God, you're so right. It was like I don't know how we're going to do this, but if we can do it, yeah. this is going to be. And here we are. That's yeah. cool. Life is funny, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's about time to wrap it up. Aww. Unfortunately. Aww. Plugging social media. Not Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Are you talking again? Yeah. Five too many shots. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> we need a disclaimer. We're going to sit down there. So we're going to have to be careful. I've got to be careful with my metaphor. Aww. But yeah, I'm on, like, Facebook and uh, Instagram. David Howard Thornton, so I'm still there. <laughs> Insta Catherine C, or just Catherine Corcoran, you can find me. I'm on Instagram as Squid Enthusiast, like <laughs> someone who's enthusiastic about squids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on Instagram and just uh, you know, look out for part two when we start shooting in two weeks. It's coming, it's going to be pretty fucking awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Also, thank you. Is still here? Oh, what a shame. Oh, what a shame. Do you guys like Felissa? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you guys so much. Seriously, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you.